Today we're going to be covering the 2016-2022 Prius off-road aluminum skid plate installation process. Alright, so we're going to start by raising and supporting the car. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and remove all of the 10mm bolts that hold the front portion of the plastic skid plate to the underbody of the vehicle. Once you've got all those removed, you can go ahead and grab your flat blade screwdriver or your body panel removal tool and remove the plastic push pin from the front and center of the plastic skid plate. Then we can continue on to the rear portion of the plastic skid plate and remove the remaining plastic push pins that secure the skid plate to the bottom of the vehicle. Once you've got all the plastic push pins removed, you can go ahead and set the plastic skid plate aside and grab your 14 millimeter socket. So on this step, we're going to be removing four of the cross member bolts. There are eight in total, but we're going to remove four of them. You're going to remove the rearmost rear bolts and the frontmost front bolts. The front bolts are typically covered up by the portion of the plastic skid plate that hangs down, which we will trim off later. But if you pull this back, it'll expose them. You can remove them. From here I like to grab the hardware that came with your skid plate. We're going to go ahead and remove the black bushings that are supplied with it as well and get your bolts and washers ready to be secured. For this next step we're just going to put the metal skid plate in place but not tighten it down. I like to typically use the rearmost bolt holes, get them somewhat in just finger tight so that the skid plate is secured and then we can go ahead and mark out where we need to trim on the plastic skid plate. Now that we've got the skid plate in place, we can go ahead and grab a sharpie or marker and go ahead and mark out where we need to trim. It's pretty obvious here. You'll see where it hangs down and it actually follows the body line of the skid plate. Um, but we're going to go ahead and mark this out and then grab a sharp razor blade to do this trimming. Once you've got the other side marked out, you can go ahead and switch to the other side and repeat the same process. And once you've got both sides marked, you can go ahead and remove the two rearmost bolts and lower the skid plate back down and out of the way. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab a sharp razor blade. I've also used scissors for this process as well as a cutoff wheel. A razor blade just tends to be the cleanest and the most simple, although albeit it probably is the most dangerous as well. So please be careful during this part and make sure not to cut yourself, especially pulling towards you like I'm doing here, which is definitely not the best practice to use. Once you've got the main portion removed, you can go ahead and go back and clean up any low spots that hang down or any rough areas. Um, these tend to be pretty simple, but I like to go through and try and make sure that the line follows the contour of the subframe. Then you can go ahead and switch over to the other side and repeat the exact same process.
Now that you've got both of those trimmed, you can go ahead and grab your skid plate and our mounting hardware. You're going to want to put the bushing on the back side of the skid plate and then put the bolt through it. This bushing allows for enough clearance between the subframe and the skid plate without disforming the skid plate when you tighten everything down. But once again, I like to start with the rear bolts, they tend to be the easiest, and then moving forward to the front bolts. It helps if you're able to use your knee to support the skid plate while you're securing the rear bolts as well as the front bolts. Um, it would probably help to have a second set of hands here, but it's definitely not impossible to do by yourself as well. Once you've got the four main mounting bolts uh, finger tight and in place, you can go ahead and move forward to the four 10 millimeter screws that secure the front bumper fascia to the skid plate. This allows if there's any wiggle room, you can kind of move the skid plate back and forth as well as push in the front bumper lip because it is movable. So if it needs to go back a little bit or forward a little bit, there's a little bit of play there as well. Now that we've got all of our hardware in place and finger tight, you can go ahead and grab your 14 millimeter socket and we're going to go ahead and tighten down the four main mounting bolts. Last but not least, you're going to want to grab your four plastic push pins and use these in the available holes to secure the remaining portions of the plastic skid plate to the fender well liners. And we're done. Now you've got a little additional clearance and a lot more protection.